Hi, I'm Aaron Friend, and this is how to build a common rafter, how to cut a common rafter. Uh, say you want to build a dog house, say you want to build a shed, maybe you want to build a house. You are, if you want to have a gable roof, a roof that has a rafter and a ridge and sits on the wall, and it often has a, uh, a ceiling joist that would go across on the wall as well, or it might be vaulted and have like a little tie here. But if it's just a dog house, you might not need anything. It'd probably be all right. You might want to reinforce one of them or something. But anyway, um, what you need to know to cut this thing is you need to know all kinds of stuff if you're going to use these tools, modern technology. You've got to know uh, the span of the building or these tools. What you've got to know is the span from outside wall to outside wall and that's the span. And then half of the span is the run of your triangle. See, so you've got a, a triangle and you've got a run and a rise at the ridge. And your hypotenuse of that triangle is your rafter. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared, a squared plus b squared equals c squared um, to get that length. We can use all these charts, this is if you have your pitch and your and your um, your width of the building, you can use the chart that comes with the speed square to find the length. This is a more advanced version of that same thing. It's a bunch of different charts to find irregular hip roofs and super complicated oct octagons and things. You can also use this calculator to do that Pythagorean theorem for you. It just does it in feet and inches, so you don't have to convert, and it makes it a little bit simpler. Uh, or if you don't want to use any math at all, and that's, that's what I like, uh, you can just use this square because it's designed with that math already in it. What you do is you put, always put the, this bottom stair gauge, I always put it at 12 for a common rafter. So everything on a common rafter, all the pitches are described in 12. So you have a, a 4 and 12 roof, a 6 and 12 roof, an 8 and 12 roof, a 12 and 12 even all the way up to 24 and 12, a super steep roof. Uh, a 12 and 12 is just like a, a 45 degree angle. Um, and this is a 6 and 12 here. So all of that is this, this gauge. So this is all 12, and then the rise is all this gauge. So this is set at 6 inches. If I was going to set it at 10 inches, then that roof would be a 10 and 12. But it's set at 6 inches. So it will show me the plumb cut of this rafter. And this is the level cut of this rafter, the seat cut. Um, people call this part of the, the square the tongue or the blade. They call this part the body or the, uh, what is this, the arm. All kinds of stupid things. But this is level. This is plumb. That's all you need to think. Plumb level, okay? And plumb is uh, level straight up and down. Um, so anyway, um, you got your 6 and your 12, and you mark it. So let's let's do that. Let's do that. Let's get a, a rafter here, and we're going to mark our 6 and 12. Stair gauge at 12, stair gauge at 6. I'm going to mark this mark. Now, from that point, you could measure with the Pythagorean theorem with a tape measure down to the end of the rafter, or you could step it off. So I'm going to build a doghouse that's four feet wide, so half of the width is the run, so that's two feet. So my two feet is my run, and my rise, the ratio for my rise is a four, a six and twelve, but I'm going to go two feet of a run, so that means I'm going to transfer my six and twelve, so this is one, one foot right here at 12, I'm going to put a tick mark. Now I'm going to go two feet because my run is two feet. So I'm going to put a tick mark at two feet. So what I'm doing is I'm actually getting the hypotenuse, which is the distance from here to here, measured down the board, but I'm using the run, just these 12 inches to get my run. My, so if it was a, a a one foot six inch run, then I just go one foot to there and then six inches on this level side, on this run side. So this is the run and this is the rise, right? So 
Um, so all right, it's two feet, right? So that's my, that's my, you can also flip the, the square over when you run out of rafter tail, or, or you can use a speed square, honestly, that's what I do. Okay, so this is my building line, and that's the, the edge of this wall right here. Now, you can get another framing square. What I like to do is just go along that line, and I'd like to have a seat cut that is three and a half inches because a my wall plate is three and a half inches. And I like to, to be full bearing seat cut. And you can't always have a full bearing seat cut. If your pitch is 12 and 12 and you're using a two by six, you're not gonna get a seat cut that has enough of a half height above plate. You have to have two thirds of the material left over in order for this rafter tail to be considered strong. So, but this is a dog house, it's not that big a deal. Um, so I'm gonna go three and a half inches over and describe that level line. Now I'm gonna cut this out, this area right here. That's called a bird's nest. Now, how far do I want my overhang to be? For purposes of this video, I'm going to go 10 inches, because that's really all the lumber I've got left. So a 10 inch overhang is just following that run a little bit further to 10 inches down this scale, and I'll make a tick mark there. Now, I could just cut it off square, I could uh, just make a square line at that mark, and that would be a, uh, a square cut rafter, which sheds water pretty nicely, and that might be all you need to do. Or you could also um, make that a plumb cut. It really gets hard to use a framing square at the end of the lumber like this. You could also use a speed square and set it. Yeah, it's hard to use a speed square even. <laughs> what I like to do is extend out with a pencil. It doesn't matter. Here's, so using this, and I can say, there you go, that's my plum cut. Boy, we just exactly have the exact amount right there. So that's my plum cut for my rafter. And now, I don't want to have a pointy, pointy point at the end. I also might want to have a piece of uh, fascia board that's three and a half inches thick. So I don't want this to be four inches long. So I'm gonna cut this off, I'm gonna cut it off at three inches. Okay, and I want that to be a level cut as well. Oh, that's kinda of hard to get from here, but I can always go back this way. And I could slide down a bit down that stair gauge, but I can go forward maybe. Okay. Well, I can square it. So you can just square it with the square, just like this, to the plumb line. Now that's going to be a, another level cut for putting your soffit on underneath if, you, if you're going to have soffit in your doghouse. Probably not. Um, at the ridge because the ridge is just what we use we stepped off the Pythagorean theorem describing that triangle but that triangle goes right to the center of the ridge but we have a 2 by 4 at the center of the ridge so in order to get the right length of a rocker we have to subtract half of this 2 by 4 from the ridge or from the from our total length so that's three quarters is half of an inch and a half 2 by 4 so you've got to subtract three quarters going straight back from the first line. Three quarters. All right, so we subtract three quarters from that original ridge there. Now we cut that line.
production framer and you've got 100 rafters to cut, you might cut a little bit longer so that this drops out. See, it doesn't cut through all the way with the round blade. But since this isn't production framing, we can, uh, we can just use this hand saw to clean it up. There's a narrow, thin kerf on that little cordless saw. That's it. You got your ridge cut. You got your wall cut. Your your uh, bird's mouth. You have got your uh, fascia board or your subfascia and fascia board cut. And you could do deductions for that too if you're really having to go to an architect's plan. It was like an exact two foot overhang. You'd have to deduct your uh, your subfascia, your three quarter hardy, and your and, or your three-quarter hardy fascia and your inch and a half subfascia from this, or you just have to know what what material is going to go on. Also, when you nail your subfascia board or your fascia board on, make sure that you use a pencil to put it in plane. Because look, if you nail it right here, your roof decking is going to run into it, and your roofing is going to run into it. So if you slide it down a little bit. Make sure that when you nail it, you nail it in plane. All right, so uh, another use for a, a pencil, right? And then your soffit would go under here and you'd probably have some kind of a soffit block going back that way too. But, uh, there you go, that's a common roof rafter. I'm Aaron Friend, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.